Today I want to show you just how easy it is to learn Pearl Dental software. I guarantee it doesn't matter if you've used Pearl for 20 years or this is your first time ever seeing the system, you're going to learn something in this video and it's going to take less time than it takes to eat your lunch. Let's get started. Okay, so the first lesson we're going to learn is how to start Pearl. So you're looking for the green icon that looks like this. You double click on it. The good thing is it will always keep itself up to date. So if there is any updates, it'll just do it itself. If you're working at a site that has multiple practices, you can drop this list down and select from the list if it's a different practice you're logging into. And you enter your username and password. Every time you log in, you'll get a tip. As soon as it's finished logging in, you'll come to the diary screen. And from here, you can start using the Pearl system. So now we're logged into the Pearl system. The first thing we're going to learn is how to search for patients. And what you do is you go to this magnifying glass. And here's our first tip. You can search on whatever field you want. So you can put in their name. So I'm going to put in Ben Baker. But I can also put in things like their postcode. Or I can put in a mobile, an email, um, or an ID number. So we're going to search for me, Ben Baker. I'm going to go to my patient record. The next thing we're going to learn how to do is add a patient if they don't already exist. And to do that, you press this button here with the little plus sign, add new patient. You can type in the details. A tip here is you can type everything lowercase and use the tab key on your keyboard to move to the next field. And what that'll do is it'll automatically put your case in for you. So I'm putting Ben Smith. I'm going to register him to Peter Wilson and I'm going to make him an NHS patient. I'm going to put in a date of birth and we're going to put in an address. The tip here is that you can make some of these fields required. So if you always want your reception team to capture mobile or email or even referral source, which tells us where the patient heard about our practice, we can head over to the practice settings and configure those to make them required. When we're happy with the patient record, we hit save. So in this case, we, we've not captured a mobile number, so I need to type something in. And press save again. And Pearl will validate the mobile number to make sure it's the right length. So now we've finished re registering our patient, we're going to book them their first appointment. And to do that, we head over to the diary tab. So it's this little icon here. We're on today's diary. And if we want to book for today, we find the time slot and we double click. This will give us a list, um, an appointment booking screen. We can drop this down and select from the list of appointments. And this is all set up depending on your practice. So it won't necessarily be the same as my list. We're going to choose an exam. We're going to say patient needs to bring proof of exemption. If we want, we could send an SMS confirmation there and then for the patient. We're going to hit save. And you can see the diary as the appointments being made in the diary. So now we're on the diary, let's take a look at the settings that we can change. We've got a list of performers here, and if we reorder them, it'll change what order they appear on the diary. Under that, we've got only show registered. Now that means if a patient is registered, for example, to Peter Wilson, when I go to the diary on that patient, it'll only show me the diary of the dentist that is assigned to that patient. Under that, we've got hide not working. So that's what that setting does. If it's ticked, if a, if a dentist is marked as not working on that specific day, they just won't show up in the diary. If it's unticked, they'll show up. But as you can see with John Smith, he's marked as not working. We've got start week view today. And that means if we're in the week view, which we can toggle up here, it'll start from the day it is. So today happens to be Thursday. If it's not ticked, it'll always start from the Monday of the week that you're looking at. Under there, we've got a few ease of use settings. So we've got increased diary size. So when I toggle that on, we can see the diary gets a lot bigger, a lot easier to see. We've got save place in diary. So by default, Polo will always jump back to the day you're looking at. If I tick save place in diary, if I navigate away from the diary, it'll remember where I was. And next time you come to the diary, it'll pick up where you left off. Bookmark is very similar apart from it does it for a specific day. So um, say if you're looking to move a week on Monday's appointments, you can bookmark that specific day. And every time you navigate away and come back, it'll take you back to that specific date. 
back to booking again, there's a few things that'll make your life a lot easier. So say if we're looking for an appointment for this patient, we can hit the find a slot button here. This will search for all the time slots for this specific dentist. So as your diaries get booked up, it becomes increasingly hard to find a suitable appointment. But with this, it makes it a real, a real easy process. So we can go, we want an appointment with Peter Wilson. We're only going to look two months in advance. We want the appointment after, let's say, 3 p.m. And the patient can only be seen on Mondays. We press search. And here's all the availability that suits those criteria for the next two months. We can extend on this if you've got a hygienist running and you want the patient to see the dentist and then the hygienist. And what we do is we say appointment for Peter Wilson, second appointment for any hygienist, or you can say any dentist. The appointment length for the hygienist is 30 minutes. We hit search and we can see here we can get an appointment with Peter Wilson followed by Troy. And these are all the availabilities for the next two months. And to use that, we double click, which will jump us to it in the diary. So we're now on the 17th of May and we can book the exam. We can then book the hygienist clean straight after. If your patient's been in surgery and needs an additional follow-up appointment, it's done for our planned appointment system. So we've navigated to Ben Smith and we can see by this icon with the question mark that the patient has a planned appointment. It's shown here, so fill in 20 minutes. And if we double click on it, it'll use the find a slot utility to find all suitable space for that filling. And we can double click and that'll take us to the space where it can be booked. And if we go to book, It'll automatically fill in the details. The other thing we can do, so that appointment's booked now, if I cancel the appointment, I'll say the patient cancelled, it'll go back into the planned appointment so it needs to be booked again. The other thing we can do is drag and drop it to the space we want to fill. During the day, as patients arrive to and from the practice, we need to check them in to notify surgery they've arrived and keep track of where people are in the building. There's a couple ways to do that. You can do it from the normal diary screen. So we're going to go to the diary. We're going to go to today. And we can see Ben Smith's appointments here. I'm going to right click. And I've got the option to mark the patient as arrived. That'll send a notification to anyone who's signed up to have notifications for Pete Wilson's diary. So that will normally be the dentist himself and possibly the reception team. We can see from the top right hand corner that we've got one patient waiting and they're really happy because they're, they're still early. The other way to arrive people is with the check-in screen button, which is just here. This will show us columns of people who are coming in today, arrived people, and then you can move them all the way over to left. And all we do is drag and drop them into the specific column. So if this patient's not actually arrived, we're gonna move them back, they're back out of the building now. Um, and then when they do arrive, we drag them into the arrived column. We can also use these arrows to move them left or right. Once they're arrived, we can navigate to the patient's record by pressing the I button just here. We've arrived Ben Smith in surgery, and now what we're going to do is do some dental charting. So we move over to the charting tab. This patient is, is a new patient, so we have no um, clinical record for him already. So what I'm going to do is start a treatment plan. It's filling in some of these details. So we're, his dentist is Peter Wilson. It's a dental um, course of treatment and we can choose a template to base it off. So I'm going to base it off exam, uh, scale and polish and x-rays. Those templates you can set up yourself. When I hit create new treatment plan, it's going to put them into my treatment plan here. And what we can do is start charting this patient. So this patient's never been in before, so we have no information. Um, how the charting works in Pearl is it, it's very similar to the brown cards. The middle rows are the baseline or what's present in the patient. So we can add missing teeth. We can add unerupted teeth. And we can add some partially erupted teeth. And how I'm doing that is I'm holding the left, the, uh, I'm holding the letter key. So I'm holding M and left clicking for missing. I'm holding U and left clicking for unerupted. I'm holding P and left clicking for partially erupted. If you're not quite up to that, it's really easy to use. You just left click and all the first um, five entries there are all tooth states. So we've got sound, missing, gap closed, interrupted, partially closed, partially erupted. 
for any treatments that exist on the patient. So if it's in the center, it's, it's the baseline, it's, it's what's present on the patient. We, we've got a few methods of doing it. We can drag and drop. So we're gonna say amalgam fill in MOD. If we've just charted something, we can right click. So it will remember that it's an amalgam fill in and then we can just left click on the surface or we can left click and say uh, fill ins composite fill in BI. We can also search over here. So if we look for crown, I can drag and drop that. Um, and let's say we're going to put in some caries. So we've got some established caries on the five. So we're going to say MOD established caries. Okay, so this is our patient's mouth as they came to us. For our treatment plan, we're going to add in a amalgam filling. So I'm dragging and drop. It's highlighted the MOD because that's what it thinks you want to do because the caries is MOD. And that'll add it to the treatment plan. If you want to add any additional items to the treatment plan that aren't chartable, we go down here and press add item. And let's say we're going to do a do a color photo and we'll do nine of those. Now we'll look at how to mark treatment as done when you finished it. So in this case, we're going to have a very good day and get everything done in one sitting. So I mark things as done. So I'm going to mark the exam as done. You'll notice if I mark the amalgam as done, it'll move it into the center and update your baseline. So we can see the established caries was recorded and is now gone and it's replaced with the amalgam. The other thing we can do is if we've finished the whole treatment plan is press this button here, which will mark every item on the treatment plan as done. Now we've finished everything in the treatment plan. So we're going to tick TC here, treatment complete. And what that's going to do, it's going to generate the relevant bill. So this is an NHS band two charge, and it's going to generate the FP17. If there was AGP, we can add a number there. We can update the patient's recall months, but what we're going to do is just press close treatment plan that's going to finish the treatment plan off, update the patient's recall date and create an FP17 that's already populated. And all we have to do is press check and sign. What we're going to do here is we've started some of the patient's treatment, but we need the patient to come back for this amalgam fill in. To do that, what we can do is press the little diary button here. We choose what the patient needs to come back for. So they need 30 minutes for a filling. We choose who they want it to be with. So we're going to say Peter Wilson um, and we can say when they need it for. So either as soon as possible, we can say um, maybe we need to wait two weeks for some lab work to come back. When we hit save, that will mean when the patient is on reception, as we showed you earlier, they can use the um, planned appointment and the finder slot to book that appointment for the patient. We've finished our course of treatment. We're going to show you how to use the clinical notes system now. So you've got two ways of using it. We can do add new clinical note, which is kind of a free text. You can type in your note however you want it to be. So we just get a note screen and we can type uh, patient, CO, etc. When you're using this, how you actually use it is you have auto text set up. So if I look at the auto text we have, so we've got a text here for amalgam fill in. And to use it, if you can see there, it says AG fill. If I type AG fill and hit the space bar, It'll pre-populate my note with a template I've already designed. And you can set all those templates up by pressing this little cog here. The other option for clinical notes is to use the clinical questionnaires. And to do that, we press the little question mark button here. We have a list of templates set out for these questionnaires. And these are all defined by your practice. However, the system does come shipped with some defaults. So we're going to say new patient exam. And we can see here, we can run through and it's a kind of set way of filling in your notes. Uh, if you bear with me, I'll fill this one in where it's required. I'm going to hit save. Oh, I'm going to put in a reason for visit for pain. Okay, so we've saved that note now. And we can see it gives us like a condensed view of the note. And those, again, they can all be set up by your practice. You can also share them with other pearl practices that you might know. So we've done, showed you the ways to do clinical notes. The next thing we're going to learn is how to fill in a BPE within the system. So we can see BPE here. You also have a BPE tab with just with the six point pocket charts as well. But for now, we're going to record it like this. So we're going to go add. And I'm going to just fill it in zeros and one one in that 
uh, sextant. So hit save. We can see we've got a green score for this BPE. If we did want the additional information, we can head over to the BPE Imperio tab and we can see we've got the, uh, the same BPE information there. We've also got the same clinical notes as from the chart in, but the only thing that we've got that's extra is the Perio assessment. And if I press add, that'll allow me to fill in a full six point pocket chart upper and lower. So I am gonna fill it in very quickly. We're gonna go through, put some fives on pocket depth, I just wanted to show you quickly that when you do fill them in, it'll give you a percentage score for multiple things. So we've got separation present, bleeding present, plaque present, uh, average pocket depth. And what it will do is next time you fill in a six point pocket chart, it will actually compare each measurement. So if the bleeding was 12% and it's now 6%, you'll be able to show the improvement to your patient. We're going to fill in this patient's medical history. So we go to the medical history tab. This list of questions is set up on the practice level. Um, it's worth mentioning that the patients can do this online with the Pearl portal. They can also do it in practice with the Pearl pad. For now, we're just going to do it manually. So we're going to tick diabetes, uh, supporting notes, we can press type 1. If you do want the system to raise a warning on the patient, you can press medical warning now uh, here, which will add a flag to the patient's record. If the patient has any specific accessibility requirements, we can press blue badge, which will add a blue badge tick to the patient's record so you know to be aware of that. So we're back on reception now. Um, we can see Ben Baker's in treatment if we want to go to his record. And what we're going to do is just take the money. So his balance is £65.20, band 2 charge. We go across to accounts. Um, and what you can also do is double click on the, the icon at the top and it'll jump you to the relevant place. We can see he's got an NHS bill. The patient's going to pay the full amount, so we can just press pay balance. Then all we need to do is assign the payment type. So we're going to say we took it with a debit card, pay balance, and we can see the patient's debt is now, uh, the balance is now zero. So we finished our, our very, very quick run through of Pearl now. Um, and I hope after watching it, you've maybe learned something new or possibly you're, you're less intimidated to have a go at using the system. Obviously, if you need any help, you can always call our support team and it's 0116 275 9995.